everybody. Gina DeLuca here. Okay, uh, I've already started making a mess without you. Sorry about that. Uh, little little case of the Butterfingers. Um, today, I am doing a fire-inspired spiral pour. Uh, the colors I will be using for my cell makers, I have the Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in Garnet, Copper, and 24 Karat Gold. For my background colors, I have a mixture of Dioxazine Purple by Liquitex Basics and Mars Black. Uh, also Liquitex Basics, and there was just a drop of titanium white added to that just to make sure it didn't dry completely, it's super, super dark. Uh, it'll be very dark. Uh, this is just the black. I decided to go with more of a purple color. There's a very, very deep purple, like a almost like velvety purple. These paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And that mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is about a two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it disappears very quickly. It is making a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. There's no lumps, no thick and then thin. Sometimes you get bubbles in there and it looks like a lump, but uh, this is the consistency that we are looking for. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube. That gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint brands, colors, consistency, recipe, and of course, the technique, how to do it. This is the painting in that particular video. This box here contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in that painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those colors there are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in my cup. I want to make sure that I have enough background paint for my pour. So I put about two ounces in there. This is a 14 inch canvas. So you can see this uh, base coat is more purple than what I covered the edges with. So uh, I have reserved some of that paint in my cup to put at the top of my pour cup. Um, I cover the edges first in my straight pours because I, the way that I mix a straight pour is pretty thin. And especially using Floetrol, sometimes you don't get the greatest coverage on the sides. So I just like to make sure that uh, the edges are covered. It is easier to just cover it first than it is to come back and try to fix it later. I like to troubleshoot before there's trouble. So I lay down a base coat because I want those paints to slide around easily and uniformly and if the canvas is dry, something has to stick to it first, and that is going to be whatever is on the outer edge of the puddle that you pour. And 
then the paint that is in the center will roll over top of the paint on the edges so you will lose some of your composition it may not spread evenly you'll wind up with wobbly lines it is better to just take that extra step and if you are using silicone you definitely want to lay down a base coat because if the silicone is the first thing that hits your canvas you're going to wind up with bald spots on your canvas where the paint won't stick because silicone is hydrophobic so the silicone will push away the paint so it's kind of a similar effect here with using matte paints and glossier paints the matte paints push away the glossier paints which gives you cells okay now i'm going to put some paint in a cup i'm going to start with the garnet I'm going to pour from up high. I want this paint to sink. I'm not using as much as I usually do. Uh, I don't want, I'll tell you what I do want. I want some negative space. So I am not using quite as much of the Cell Maker paints because I want that background to show through. And if I use too many of the cell makers, then I'll just get all cells, which is still beautiful, but not what I'm trying to get here. And then we'll just cross my fingers that this is gonna be enough paint. Mayhaps I should have mixed a bigger batch of my uh, background. So the base coat is what goes on the canvas. The background is the first color that goes in my cup when I'm doing a straight pour. It is the color that is not supposed to, to sell. So the matte paints, which are the deco art paints in this particular case, are the cell makers and the Liquitex are the glossier paints. So now I'm going to just come over top of that so that the cell makers all have some paint to react with. Okay, pop these bubbles one more time. Double check that I am centered. Okay, so I am going to pour quickly, spin slowly, and I'm going to go clockwise. If I spin too quickly, this will just start to look like a ring pour. And I want this to be a spiral. Doing my best to stay in the center. Well, the spinner is making an unfortunate noise at the moment. That is terribly annoying. Oh, I am shaky. Too much caffeine this morning. Okay, so I'm going to get closer to the canvas as I get closer to the center. Here comes the gold. Whatever color I put in last has a tendency to a bit of it to sink into the bottom of the cup. 
and that usually gives me a very nice focal point. That is why the color that I put in last has the most contrast to the background color. Because I want that to be the focal point. So if I'm using a light color, I'll put the darkest color in last and vice versa. Okay, coming close to the end here. Okay. Well, so far, this is exactly what I wanted. I'm just going to give this a tiny adjustment. Probably not going to matter, that likely is going to spread out. But I'm loving these colors together. What is making that terrible, terrible noise? Well, there's a piece of tape rubbing the bottom of the uh, spinner, making that noise, and there's nothing I can do about it at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to pop these bubbles, and the bubbles are going to bring up paint from the underlying layers. And because the paints that are popping up are matte they are going to have a hydrophobic effect and they are going to push that dark purple away and they're going to spread out and they're going to get bigger and as i let this paint puddle percolate those cells will grow so when i do finally spin it they will get even bigger and that is how you get boulder cells Basically, the boulder cells are when two of the colors, two or more of the colors, attach to each other. So when you do stretch them, it has this very 3D effect with highlights and shadows, you know, like in here, where I have a blend of the garnet, the copper, and the gold. That right there is exactly what I was hoping for. And when I stretch this, they will look even more 3D. I need to adjust my center. My canvas is leveled to the table. The spinner is not exactly level, so I have to uh, make adjustments for that. So as I let this sit, I'm going to let this, these cells continue to pop up so that they have the opportunity to stretch when I spin it. Otherwise, when they come up on their own, that's what I call pop-up cells. Other people call them pearl cells, but they pretty much get as big as they're going to get and then they don't really do much else. Um, I like that 3D effect that I get, so. And I will, just in case I need it, I'm going to put a bit more of what is left in these uh, cups back into my pouring cup. So if I need a little help on the corners, I have a little extra paint. Let 
need to keep this uh, moving so that it doesn't tilt too much to one side. Okay. All right. I'm going to give this one more pop of the bubbles here. And I do have a bit of paint left in my cup here. I'm just going to put a little extra on the corners. They can uh, kind of start to set up on you. Cat hair. At least two free with every painting. So, adding this little bit to the corners can really help to uh, get that to stretch for you. It's going to spin off and tilt off, but the corners are the hardest part. So if you can give them extra love, might as well. Okay, I think we are ready. I'm just going to make sure that my center is in the center. Don't think I'm gonna have a whole lot of uh, negative space on this one. Actually. I'm having a hard time getting situated today. Oh, that noise is terrible. I'm so sorry. Jeez, if I spin in the other direction, is it? Oh, that's even worse. Look, see, do, you, do you see what's happening today, y'all? I'm telling you there are some days where I am all thumbs. Oh, um, yeah. My, my mind is just not, uh, it's not, not as sharp as it usually is today. So you don't have to spin fast. It will get there. This does not need to be flinging onto your walls. I never go past this paper. It, it never flings past the paper. It doesn't really fling past like however far the corner comes out. It's, it's actually, for the most part, it's like below the corners. This definitely has a fiery look to it. Um, going to give these corners a little bit of help here. So just in case I can't get it to cover fully, it will at least be 
interesting. But I should be able to get it mostly to the edge. I can't stand that noise. <laughs> Sounds like something groaning for help. Hmm. Okay, so I could leave it like this. Kind of like these cells popping up here so i don't know if if i i don't want to spin that more to get this off i want to be able to keep that and there's a little bit on this corner so that's balanced out and i like i like what's happening in this area so i don't think i want to spin it anymore I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, so I am going to let this sit and do what it's gonna do. More cells will pop up. Um, that is just the nature of the straight pour. And um, I will bring you in for a close up. But as far as what I'm looking at right now, I really am happy with how this piece came out. This looks very fiery, uh, very molten. So, okay, back in a few. Okay, here it is. I am very happy with this piece. The blending is beautiful. Awesome 3D action going on. The camera always gets confused at the uh, the metallics. It like shifts the color on me. Some really cool cells down here at the bottom. That's why I didn't want to spin those off. But there it is. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. If you did, please do like, share, and subscribe. And uh, if you are already subscribed, please make sure you clicked that bell. Uh, only 7% of my subscribers have clicked the bell uh, to receive notifications. So that bell came up after I, I had 100,000 subscribers already. And, um, you know, people don't come back to click the bell. So just check, make sure you, make sure you click it. Do check out the description box below for uh, links to uh, my Patreon. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Check out uh, what's going on there. I have exclusive content. We have weekly Zoom meetings um, where you can ask uh, whatever questions you need, whatever you need help with. I am there. Um, but check that out. Uh, also in the description box, you will find a link to my website or Gina DeLuca, where you can, <laughs> GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music in the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards for sale. And you'll also find my affiliate links for Deco Art, these beautiful, wonderful paints that make this magic happen. I am an affiliate and uh, there is a coupon code uh, in the description box and there's codes for um, other companies as well. So check that out. And you'll find a link to uh, our Facebook group, 
Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. But uh, do check out that Patreon. I think you would, uh, you, you could get some value over there. Um, and also stay tuned for the trailer for the Fluid Art Experience where I will be teaching in April with lots of other wonderful artists. And uh, there will be a trailer telling you all about it. Or you can just go to fluidartexperience.com and book some in-person classes with me in Seattle in April. All right, everyone. I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.